tip before we get into the scripture. If you want to uh, praise him on Sunday, serve him on Monday. Amen. Amen. If you want to be able to come to the house of God and praise God, serve him seven days a week. Come serve on, him man. all week long and then you'll be able to praise him on Sunday. Amen. It's hard to come in and praise him when you've neglected him all week Amen. long. Uh, but uh, you just uh, 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 turn with us if you will now. Hebrews 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 22 of correct the reading reads like this. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. Underline that, would you? to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. I like that. I don't know whether you like that or not, but I like that. And it blesses my heart every time I read that. Uh, for such a high priest became us, who is, now I want you to underline this verse, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. Oh, thank God for that. Thank you, Lord. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which it was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. Now, you know, uh, a simple thought this morning is this, a God that delivers. A God that delivers. Now, I want you to, uh, 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 Christ will deliver us uh, in several times of our life. And I hope and pray that I can show you, show you this like God showed it to me. But first of all, I see a God that delivers in a time of trial. Amen. Now, every one of us go through times in our life when we go through trial. And it seems like our little church here lately has been plagued with going through trial. One right after the other. We went through death. We went through sickness. We went through uh, a lot of things, but we went through it together. Amen. Now, in all of that, thank God we weren't alone. And there's, I, I guess that's the time in our life to where we have to really stay prayed up. And have to really stay where we can be uh, used of God is in the trying times of our life. You see, you sang a song sometimes uh, that it's easy to serve God when you're on the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. It's easy to shout on the mountaintop. Right. But I want to tell you something, it's down in that valley, that's where the fertile ground's at. Amen. And that's where we grow is in the valley. And that's where we find the strength that will help us get through the trials in our life. Amen. I thought about uh, as just in, in the past few weeks, how many in this church have went through trial and their faith has been tested more than it has ever been tested before. And it's still, some of you's faith is still being tested every day. I thought about Scott. Sunday when he come here and uh, I thought about the look on his face Betty when uh, the first thing he asked you know was have I got cancer and Betty had to say she didn't want to say yes God you've got cancer but she said but it's treatable and he said have I got don't lie to me and Betty just 
put her hand on his little hand, and, and we begin to pray. And, and, you know, there's times that we just have to trust God uh -huh. in these trials of our life. And I know, uh, uh, Betty, when you look down there at your baby, and there wasn't nothing that you could do. You had done everything you could do. You had been there with him. You had stayed there a whole day and uh, was going to stay as long as it took to be with your baby. But there wasn't nothing that you could do. When we look down at our loved ones, rather you've had a trial, you've had to look at your dad and know there's nothing that you could do. You would gladly put yourself in his place if you could, but you can't, and it's a trial in your life. Some of us go through trials. I remember sitting with dad when dad was uh, dying, and I thought, dad, if I could just do this for you, I would. But I was so helpless and so hopeless, there was nothing that I could do. And we go through times like that. You see, that's what makes the trial harder. It's because we've got that human aspect that we want to do something, we want to help, and we want to find some kind of way to help, but there's nothing we can do. And at that time in our life, we have to understand we have a God that's interceding for us, a God that will deliver us, a God that will get us through that time in our life if we'll just let Him be God. Amen. Amen. And it's hard to do that when you're hurting. Yeah. You know, in the circle of life as we know it, as human beings, I look back on my life and it don't seem like but just a few weeks ago that I was in my prime and I was uh, feeling good. I was doing anything I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And now I've come to a time in my life there on the where uh, I have aches and pains like most of you do. Man. And I get up some mornings, it's just a trial just to get through that day. And I, I'm learning to lean on Jesus more than I ever have before. I'm learning to trust Him more. That's the reason, young folks, I'm telling you, you can learn something if you look at these old gray hairs because, you see, we've come the route of trial after trial after trial, and we know that God will sustain us in these times of trial Amen. in our life. The human side of us want what we want. We want to do it our way. We want to do it like we want to do it. Yeah. But sometimes we just have to trust God. Amen. And we just have to lay it all on Him and yeah. say, Now, Lord, I'm going to trust you to get me through this trial in my life. Ain't you glad that he's a God that don't leave us when the trials come? Amen. Ain't you glad that you don't have to walk into a place and there's a little statue of a little fat man sitting there uh, with his arms bowed and you got to trust him to get you through a trial? There ain't no life in it. Ain't you glad that you had not got to go to a tomb where Mohammed's buried and uh, bow outside that uh, tomb and expect somebody that's dead to help you get through this time in your life? I got news for you. There's a tomb over, uh, over there in Israel today and, uh, that's empty. <laughs> and the reason it's empty is because my Savior's gone. And he's not there anymore. And there's a lot of you still trying to keep him in that tomb. You need to let him out. You need to let him be resurrected. And you need to resurrect him in your life. And you need. He said, I go away and I'll send a comforter. Thank God for the precious Holy Ghost of God that's here today that leads us. Thank God for an inter intercessory Savior that's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now making intercession. Plead our case before the throne, not one day, but every day. Thank God for 
for an intercessory Savior uh, that didn't have to go, uh, that don't have to go back time and time and time again. Uh, but he went once and for all. Uh, brother, that blood uh, that he shed uh, for you and me wasn't just for one time, but it was for all. And he's continually sitting there on the throne That's right. Amen. making intercessions for Amen. us every day. And I thank God that he's there in the time of suffering. Right. You see, he understands our pain. He suffered more than any of us will ever suffer. There was a reason just for his suffering. Thank you, Father. There was Bless him, Lord. There was a reason that he was carried from Pilate to Herod back and forth all night long. There was a reason that he was beaten with a cat of nine tail. There was a reason that uh, he suffered all that pain. And that reason was he had to know the pain of you and me. Oh, Isaiah said, by his stripes we're healed. Right. That Savior was God, but he was man, and he knew. Uh, he, the Bible said it was uh, in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. The sinless Son of God had to suffer pain and agony so he would know what it was like for this old human body to suffer pain. Amen, man. Do you think he don't know what pain is? Do you think when you get up in the morning and you grab your old hand and you say, oh, God, help me, do you think he don't understand what you're going through? He understands. When they drove those nails in his hands and in his feet, he felt the very pain of those nails. Amen. He knows our pain. There is no pain that we could suffer that would be beyond that that he suffered. They put a crown of thorns in his head. I was planting roses for Susie. And I reached and grabbed them things. I didn't think about that they were in the truck. And I reached and grabbed one of them out of that truck. And when I grabbed that thing, it stuck me all over. Man, my hand went to stinging. And it, for, I'm talking about for two days, every day, them little tips off them thorns break off in your hand. And until I got all them things out, man, it stung and it burned and it got sore and it hurt for two or three days. Preacher, what are you getting at? God reminded me what it felt like when they pushed that crown of thorns right. down in his head. Amen. He reminded me of the suffering that he went through for us. And it also reminded me that he'll be there for me in the time of suffering. Amen. Susan and I were talking the other day and over the years, we've been called to the bedside of a lot of people that were going out to meet God. I've seen them <laughs> sit there, and I've seen them, the ones that wasn't prepared to meet God, I've seen them struggle, and I've seen them scream, and I've seen them cry, and I've seen them weep. I've heard them say, pull my feet out of this fire, this fire. I'm in hell already. You ought to be a pastor. You ought to see some of the things that we see when we're called to a bedside. But then, thank God, I remember being called a bedside of saints of God. 
And I can, I've seen them when uh, they would just slip out into eternity. Right before they'd leave, they'd say, uh, my daddy said, hey, mama, right before he left, he saw mama. I, I've heard them. I, I've heard them talk about seeing uh, Aunt Ka uh, 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 Ruby Delote when she was dying. The preacher come in and was going to pray for her. And she said, Preacher, let me introduce you. And she pointed over to the side of the bed. said, let me introduce you to my sister, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Catherine had been gone for 35 years. Mm -hmm. But she saw that sister. And God let her I, I see her. Preacher, what are you getting at? I'm getting at this. When we, get to, uh, when we go through suffering and trials, God has a way of helping us to get through those times in our life. He has never forsook us and he never will. Amen. Even when we're suffering, even to the point of death, he is there with us. Amen. <laughs> Ain't you glad of that today? Amen. Ain't you glad that he's a God that will deliver? He's a God that will be there all the time, not Amen. just part of the time. Amen. Bless him, Lord. He'll be there in the time of prosperity in your life. Alan touched on this other night about God trusted us with uh, or God give us what he can trust us with, you know. You know, I was raised up just a poor boy on an old dirt farm. Never had nothing, had to work for everything we ever had. God has blessed Susan and me over the years. I don't have to get out. I work in the, I got a garden now because I enjoy it. That's my escape. I get out there and I, I work in that garden. I get out there and I talk to God and I'm, you know, that's, that's just something I like to do. But God has blessed us and we have prospered. Now, I want to tell you something. And this is going to, this is where the rubber meets the road sometimes. The reason God prosper, blesses us when we prosper is when we know where it comes from. <laughs> when we give him the honor and the glory for everything that comes in our life. Amen. When we make what he blesses us with his, when we give it back Amen. to him. And say, Lord, Amen. you give me this and I want you to have it back. Lord, I want you to use it for your honor and for your glory. I want my home to be a place where folks can come in and realize that you gave this home to me. I want them to know that my home is dedicated to you. My car is dedicated. Everything I have belongs to you. And you know what? When we get to that point in our life, God will bless us and he will prosper us and he will allow us to have those desires of our heart. A lot of times the reason God takes away is because we don't give him the glory for what he's done in our life. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Right, I believe there's a lot of folks in bankrupt court today because they didn't trust God. Right. I believe there's a lot of folks today that are homeless and under a bridge down yonder in Birmingham, Alabama, because they didn't honor God with what they had. Right. Amen. Now, let me tell you this. I believe there's a time that sometimes we have to lose everything we got just to honor God. Right. And I believe when we do that, God will give it back just more than you ever had. He'll give it back to you. But you've got to learn to honor God with everything you've got. You've got to learn to put him first with what you have. Man. Now listen to me. What a lot of folks do is they get prosperous and then they go buy a fishing boat. Hang on. Think about it. Come on. And then that fishing boat takes them to the river on Sunday morning on, instead man. of the house of God. Amen. 
It's a wonder God don't punch a hole in it for you. <laughs> God allows you to prosper. Well, preacher, are you against fishing? No, you got six days to do that. But Sunday is the Lord's day. Amen. And anything that we put in front of God on Sunday, I'm telling you, God allowed you to be prosperous. Don't take what God blessed you with and use it against it. Amen. 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 <laughs> this ain't popular, is it? God delivers us even in our prosperity. Right. Sometimes he has to take away from us to get our attention. Right. To let us know he is still God. And that everything that we've got belongs to him. Right. How many times in your life, now listen, y'all was talking about Satan and how he'll come at the church. You know how he comes at the church? Through the individual. Right. Amen. See, you can't come at the church through the whole body at one time. Uh -huh. He'll come. He ain't like God. He ain't omnipresent. Uh -huh. he, can't, he can't be everywhere at one time. He can't be but one place at one time. Uh -huh. And if he can get your ear long enough, <laughs> and he can get you. Now listen. If he can get you, to take something God's blessed you with and take you out of the house of God, you know what happens next? Somebody else will follow you. Because you see, you've always got some that lead and you've got some that follow. And where you lead me, I will follow. We need to sing that to the Lord. We need to say, Lord, where you lead me, I'll follow. Amen. Not where Brother Stanley leads me, I'll follow. Not where Brother uh, uh, Allen leads me, I'll follow. Not where the deacon board leads me, I'll follow. But we need to follow God. Amen. Now, I promise you this. Amen. He will not lead you to the Talladega racetrack on right. Sunday right. when they have in church in the house of God. He will not lead you to the Coosa River when they have a church in the house of God. He won't put you on a motorcycle and ride you all over the country when they have a church in the house of God. I'm telling you, God will bless us with uh, when we prosper if we'll just dedicate everything we've got to Him and use it for Him. God will bless us if He don't. If we don't do it, God will take it away from us. See, what you got to understand, children, is you're not your own anymore. You're bought with a price. That's right. right. Amen. You didn't find God. He found you. That's exactly right. Amen. <laughs> and you got to understand that he's got to be number one. Amen. I love that girl with all my heart, but she's number two. God is number one. It's got to be that way. I love my grandchildren. Oh, they are the most precious thing that God ever gives. But they got to be number two. I love my children. They are precious. But they got to come number two. Or number three or somewhere. God has to be number one in our life or he ain't going to be. Now, we can get up and hoot and holler and shout all we want to, but if we don't put God where, he, where He's supposed to be, I don't see how you can shout when you ain't got God where you ought to be in your life. Amen. Amen. If you want to really, you think you felt the presence of God right now, you want to feel, really feel the presence of God, I want to see you. how many really want God's presence in your life. Let me see Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right, let me tell you what to do. Put Him first. Amen. Amen. Put Him before everything. Right. Come on, preacher. Home, children, yeah. money, before everything in your life, your desires. Put Him before them. And God will prove Himself to you if you will do that. Amen. Then you will be able to shout Amen. for me. Amen. 
already talked about the hour of death. He'll be there yeah. for us in the hour of death. He'll help us. I don't believe he just helps us, but he'll carry us yeah. across the other side. Right. I don't believe he's going to send nobody after me. I believe he's coming himself. Amen. Amen. Come on. Preacher, where do you get that at? When Stephen was stoned, he didn't see one of them other boys coming after him. He didn't see the angels coming after him. He saw the Son of God standing at the right hand of God with his arms outstretched, saying, come on, Stephen. I believe the Holy Ghost delivered him straight into the arms of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't believe in soul sleep. No. I don't believe in purgatory. No. I believe that the minute the breath leaves this body, the Holy Spirit of God takes right. us straight Amen. to the throne of God. Amen. 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 Hey, son, don't believe that now. <laughs> but I don't care whether you believe it or not, it's the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, and the last point I'm going to try to make, now I'm already on your time. He'll deliver us in the day of judgment. Amen. For it is appointed unto man once to die, then after this, the judgment. Bless you, Lord. You see, all of us are going to die. Death's been on our trail ever since we drew that first breath. Right. And every one of us are going to die. Yeah. It's absolutely, positively a fact that we're going to die. Mm -hmm. The only other fact is that we're going to stand in judgment. Right. Now, you'll either stand at the judgment seat of Christ if you're saved by the grace of God. All that are saved by the grace of God will stand in the judgment seat of Christ. Now, listen to me. Oh, preacher, I heard we was all going to be in the great white throne judgment hogwash. <laughs> Ain't going to be nobody in the great white throne judgment except them that have rejected the Son of God. Right, right, man. They're the ones that are going to be in the great white throne judgment. Death and hell will deliver up the dead that's in them. And they will all stand lost, damned, doomed before God. Amen. If you die lost, you're going to stand before God lost. Right. And just as sure as... Now listen. Now hear what I'm going to say. Just as sure as my soul going to heaven when I take that last breath, just as sure as you take that last breath, if you're lost and undone without God, your soul is headed straight to hell right then. Amen. Amen. Not 30 seconds later. And I, let me tell you something. The saints can pray all they want to. Your day of grace is done, my Amen. friend. Amen. If you... Go through this world, lost and undone without God, and death finds you lost, you will remain lost. Amen. And you Amen. will burn in hell. Amen. And then the last judgment will be when you're cast into the lake of fire. That's the book. And I don't care what you believe. You believe you can float around out there and you... Uh, Go boo or whatever you want to believe. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to feel there's some things in hell that's going to be just as real as that. Hey, when I get to hell, I'm going to smell them flowers. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to drink out of the water of life. I'm going to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. I, something goes boo, can't eat, can it? <laughs> huh? Something out there just floating around can't eat, can it? I don't know about you, Cheryl, but I'm going to eat. <laughs> All I want to, I ain't going to get fat. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe God's going to help me a big man of prison, but <laughs> man, I'm just going to be able to eat it till I just eat all I want to eat. Amen. And we we'll get fat. And I ain't even going to have to get that fat free jump. <laughs> Susie ain't going to have to slip me in diet coats and try to fool me with it. <laughs> See, she loves me, and she tries her best. She'll go buy this stuff that's fat free and, and she'll try to slide it to me, you know. And, ain't that good? No, it ain't good. <laughs> if it was good, it wouldn't say fat free. <laughs> the doctor told me one time, I said, he was telling me all this stuff he wanted me to eat, you know. And I said, Doc, this what can I eat? He said, if it tastes good, spit it out. It ain't good for you. <laughs> the truth, he told me that. So I have just went on and I've eaten my pork chops and I've, <laughs> I've done like I want to do and you see how it's done to me. <laughs> but when I get up there, all that's going to change. Amen. And you better say it. You're going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to give an account. I was just reading the other night. He said we'd give an account of every idle word. That's right, amen. See, I've been studying up on this stuff that I'm going to have to give an account of you. Because I don't want nothing bothering me. Amen. I want it all to get there for me. Amen. You know, the Bible said some men's sins go before them, some come along. I don't want nothing tagging along after me. I want it all to be there when I get there and be under the blood and took care of it. Amen. But I've been studying up on all this stuff. Every idle word. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Mm. You know, when I think about, and I'm closing, y'all, y'all, I ain't getting a second one in here. When I think about all the sins that I've committed in my lifetime, and sins I've committed since I was saved, the things that I've failed to do, things that I've left undone, we sing a song sometimes that says, what will I leave behind? And I want you to think about this as I close today. We're going to leave behind something, every one of us. Will what we leave behind follow after us when we get there?